from Stage 9, it's British Touring Car Championship highlights. <laughs> you behind the wheel. High Q sponsors the BTCC. Welcome to one of the legendary venues of world motorsport. We're at Silverstone for the penultimate meeting in this year's British Touring Car Championship. And here in the Vauxhall Garage, Fabrizio Giovinardi stands on the brink of back-to-back -back titles. But only if he scores 12 points more than Jason this weekend will Fabrizio be champion once again. And if last time out at Knock Hill's anything to go by, the Seats won't go down without a fight. One of the sound is so much body. There are 156 points still available in this championship. Anything can still happen. Plato has a massive lead, two and a half seconds. Look at Giovanni. Aggressive stuff from the championship leader. Oh! oh! Turner's off. Turner's out. Plato will not be liking this. Oh no, it's him again, Giovanni. I'm liking a banana. Is uh, the yellow car in front? It. I want that banana. Lights out. Away we go. Plato and Giovanni, the top two in British touring cars. These two have fought tooth and nail. Plato still defending here. You could bet that Giovanni will attack. Jason Plato. He beats big rival Fabrizio Giovanni. All three voxels are ahead of Plato. Here comes Plato. He's past one of them. He's going around the outside of the other. Oh, oh it's contact the back. Plato's been turned around by one of the voxels. Plato out of the race. And after two victories today, suddenly it's all turned bad. In the Drivers' Championship, there's just 104 points available from the remaining six races. Fabrizio Giovanardi enjoys a healthy 41-point lead over Jason Plato, and he just needs to outscore him by 12 points a day to retain his title. But the big story in qualifying yesterday, Jason Plato grabbing pole position, the extra championship point, and the bonus ball is that he's got Darren Turner alongside him on the grid. Meanwhile, Fabrizio only qualified down in 11th place. So, is the championship race still on? Ted caught up with Fabrizio last night. Not the qualifying you were looking for here at Silverstone. What happened? I'll be honest, I don't know. Means uh, we we just trying to make a good setup uh, before to come here in the, for the weekend. Uh, this morning was pretty perfect. The car, we didn't feel anything worse. We trying to improve performance, obviously, in the two free practice. But in the end, we decide to just come back to avoid uh, to be struggled in the qualifying. But I had problem. I had traffic, a lot of traffic, uh, but it's not an excuse. Let's talk some numbers if we can. How many pole positions have you had this year? One. Or nothing. None. Nothing. How many races have you won this year? Uh, four. And how many races have Plato won this year? Six. Seven. Seven. How come you're still winning the championship by this margin? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Manage the point as I did until now. Because uh, we have to be honestly with us. We have uh, a good car, perfect car, because we finished uh, all the races. In the last four races, the SES was faster. So we have to manage that point. And do you think you can do that in, in the run-in to Brands Hatch, the last event? Why not? I have to do that. Well, I will do that because if I lose this championship with this sole point, I, I, I think I have to stop to race. Yeah. But are you concerned about next year, though? Because if they go out the way it's going at the moment, uh, they're going to run away with yeah, it. Yeah, next year will be next year. means, uh, you, you know, the rules uh, change every day, every time, because... Uh, they're running a different car, so if you watch the watering car, they're running with more ballast. So I think it's not my problem, it means I have to drive what I have got. Uh, it will be a manager problem uh, in the winter. So how will Fabrizio fare down in 11th place on the grid? We've got the highlights from round 25 coming up for you after the break. Well, as typical for Silverstone, it's wet for the beginning of round 25 of the British Touring Car Championship. 
will go to the commentary box and join Tim Harvey and first Ben Edwards. It's the fourth consecutive 1-2 on the grid for Jason Plato and Darren Turner for Sayat. The second row, we've got Colin Turkington and Tom Onslow Cole, the fastest of the Vauxhalls. Then it's Matt Neal and a good effort from Stephen Kane in the motor base car to qualify in sixth. Stephen Jelly is an excellent seventh on the grid with Harry Volkart, his best effort so far. Then Tom Chilton and Andrew Jordan with Fabrizio Giovinardi all the way down in 11th ahead of Adam Jones. Then we've got Mike Jordan and Matt Jackson further back than expected. Gordon Shedden struggling a bit too. Rob Collard's down in 16th and it's John George and Michael Doyle. And then as we get towards the back, Jason Hughes, Chris Stockton, Martin Bell, Eckert and Alan Taylor complete the grid. So Giovinardi, he was quick in practice, didn't get it together in qualifying. It was difficult to tell. Not his worst qualifying of the year, though. He was 12th on the grid at Croft and came back pretty effectively from that. So let's see what he can do here. Giovinardi, championship leader by some 41 points. His big rival on pole position. It is, of course, Jason Plato, who's taken the first race win of the day the last three events that we've been to. So can he keep that record going here today? He's got Darren Turner, his teammate, alongside him on the front row. Watch out for Colin Turkington and Tom Monslow Cole on the second row as we wait, wait for this race to get underway. All set to go on the national circuit here at Silverstone, the penultimate event of 2008. Lights out, away we go, slipping and sliding, trying to find traction. And it's a great start from Stephen Kane from sixth grid, the white BMW. Look at that, Stephen Kane's challenging for second. Plato gets away well from pole position, but Stephen Kane, an absolutely brilliant start into second place. Well, there's always a potential for a big difference in starting uh, on a damp track. The BMW, as you know, can put the power down, but Stephen Kane just hooked it up right, and the gap just opened for him in front. So it's Jason Plato who leads, Stephen Kane is second, Darren Turner in third, and then it looks as though it's Matt Neal in fourth. I think he's got ahead. Thomas O'Cole's actually lost a few places. Giovinardi's gained a few. Jelly going over the curb on the exit of Beckett's. He's lost out there, having qualified well. And now he's... Look at the middle of that pack. Oh, oh that was Collard caught in the middle. That's nowhere. You don't want to be there. There's more abreast coming <laughs> under the bridge. Adam Jones in the middle of that lot. We're watching from on board Tom Chilton. Surely this isn't going to all go through Brooklyn's the left-hander here. Let's see what happens. Chilton on the inside, trying to nip past Jones. Look at him slide. Look how slippery it is, just ahead of Chilton, there's his teammate, Gordon Shedden, trying to go around the outside. Fantastic stuff, so far so good they've made it round. Turner's up into second place, he's got the Collard's been turned round as well. Yeah, Collard, the teammate of Stephen Kane, Kane might be right up there, but Collard ends up at the back of the field. Well, I'm surprised we didn't see more of that. Actually, they dealt with the conditions well. The Sayats are running 1-2, but fourth place for Matt Neal, fifth for Turkington, sixth for Jackson, and Giovinardi is in seventh place, let me tell you, as Volkar tries to go around the outside of Cops. Yeah, well, we need to see how Darren Turner got up there, but the BMWs generally don't like the conditions half and half. They like it really wet or, or dry. They don't generally like the intermediate conditions. Maybe Stephen Kane just struggling a little bit for grip as Jordan slips up the inside of Volkar. Andrew Jordan, and he's the youngster with the battle with Harry Volkar, and those two guys just inside the top ten. It's Jason Plato who's leading this one. Whitman Wipe is still going. There is still some rain in the air. Let's take a look back at what was going on there. Well, we're looking at uh, what happens to Rob Cullen there, the white car just in front of Stockton. Oh, he gets it sideways, and, Co and Stockton had no choice but to run into the back of him. That was just a little bit too much power, too early. But, oh, and now we've got Kane on the grass, his teammate, and he's going to be beached in the gravel. There you go. Was there contact with Matt Neal? He was dicing with Matt Neal for third place. That brings Matt Neal into third place now. Fourth place for Turkington. Fifth for Matt Jackson. Matt Jackson, an amazing start and first lap because he started down in 14th and he's running fifth. That's amazing. But behind him is Giovinardi. There is Giovinardi. Just see him going through the shot. So Fabrizio Giovinardi sitting in sixth place. That'll do for now. It'll be perfect. He needs to pick up these, these points and stay out of trouble. He's doing exactly that. Um, the rain is coming down slightly heavy. It's certainly not trying. This will favour the bit, does as Volkar gets pushed out wide by uh, um, the, the, by Mike Jordan this time. Yeah, it's, uh, it is getting wet. You're absolutely right. You can see the rain falling much more heavily. You can see that on shot. Here comes Matt Jackson. Matt Jackson trying to get past fellow BMW driver Colin Turkington. He's done it. Lovely move. We've seen how good Matt Jackson can be in the wet conditions. And he's now beginning. Now that it's getting wetter, it's actually helping him. He's actually making full use of that. And Jackson from 
14th on the grid, is now in fourth place. It's amazing. Well, ever since Croft, when he had that stupendous drive in the damp from uh, 18th to second, narrowly missing out by a tenth of a second on the win, he's been praying for a few more of these wet races. They clearly have a fantastic setup, and he's on a march to the front, having passed Turkington, who's been the fastest BMW all the time in the drive. Now, Onslow Cole and Adam Jones both coming into the pits now. I suspect to change their front slick tyres to wet. Safety it's a car. good time to do it as well because the safety car is out. Yeah, so that's well timed with the safety car. So they're changing those fronts onto wet. They did go out on slicks on the front. It was worth a gamble, but the rain has come down more heavily since we started and there's no way they can stay out there with slicks on the front end. It's this is something they practice, the teams practice it every day. Five wheel nuts on these cars, so it isn't a quick job, but they won't lose a lap. If it was dry, there's a danger of them losing a lap, but because the safety car's out, they'll get out and catch up. Ah, now this was a, this was when Kane got wide. He gets wide, actually spins up the rear wheels on the curves, and then gets into a windscreen wiper tan slapper and loses it all by himself. Let's just take a look at the start from uh, Plato's point of view. Watch the BMW of Stephen Kane. Well, Turkington gets a so-so start, but here comes here comes uh, Stephen Kane. Yeah. Hooks it up on the inside, drives past Turkington, swaps to the outside and goes round the outside. Darren Turner jumps back in early to protect the inside. A brilliant start. What a shame it's ended up in the gravel. There's Jason's father, Tim. <laughs> he doesn't want to see himself. He wants to watch what's going on in the race. Here we go, race restarts then in very wet conditions and look at Matt Jackson immediately on the attack for third in the white BMW. He's going on the chase of Matt Neal and Matt Neal's going to have to go a bit defensive into Cop's corner. The spray makes it more difficult, harder to see where you're going now. Colin Turkington following him through and then it's Fabrizio Giovanni as the lead group gets away and then Andrew Jordan heads up that next group. Well, Matt Neal and Matt Jackson, two very hard racers. Matt Neal, don't forget, he's down in uh, fifth in the points and he wants to move back up he would like to finish at least third if he possibly can in this championship so he's not going to give way but Matt Jackson is on it oh look at that missed the spray the, the, the windscreen's missed it up a children's car it's actually illegal to run like that now but the scrutineers have got to see it but it'll get to the stage where he'll really have to come in and up front yeah Turk uh, sorry Jackson's got inside Matt Neal he's got yep. the uh, the inside there and I think it will go through and I think having gone through he'll probably go ahead fairly quickly well we never expected Matt Jackson when he was starting uh, way back on the grid be, to be the one that was going to take the challenge to the uh, the Seat, but he may well just be it's brilliant oh Matt, Matt Neal's fighting back good stuff from Matt Neal Matt Neal wants that place back again this is for third remember right behind is Turkington and Giovanardi and Giovanardi might get a chance to attack Turkington there not quite Matt Neal and Matt Jackson though going at it very very hard indeed good stuff between the BMW of Matt Jackson and the Vauxhall of Matt Neal and again as they head down towards Brooklands, it's going to be a battle on the brakes here. Matt Neal on the inside, the former double champion who won a title here at Silverstone a few years ago. Meanwhile, Giovanardi trying to get alongside Turkington, can't quite make it. Well, Jackson had got past Matt Neal, but I think he ran wide at Cops and got on that grass creek, spun the wheels up and lost momentum. He's trying again now the same. This is a repeat of last, last time's move. Now he's well past. He needs to make sure he gets Cops right, and Giovanardi is past Turkington. So a bit of light flashing going on from Giovanardi saying, come on, Matt, time to let me through here. But uh, he's going to have to select a moment where Matt Neal can do it without causing himself too many hassles and putting himself under pressure from Turkington and then Gordon Shedden, who's running seven. Andrew Jordan is again still just ahead of Father Mike Jordan. They're both in the top ten. And Stephen Jelly is in tenth place. Good, good to see him in the points as well. But Matt Neal at the moment not letting Giovanardi through, who's coming under a bit more pressure again from Colin Turkington, so the Vauxhalls need to think about this and how they're going to play it. Yeah, the professional way of doing it is to Matt, for Matt to just give, pull to the inside, as he's doing there, and let Giovanni go around the outside, but then not let the other car, Turkington, do it. That's exactly what he's done. That's the professional way of doing it. So Giovanni's up to fourth place. He started back in 11th, but as ever, Giovanni making places in the race. You're looking back at uh, Matt Neal now, who's now got to watch out himself for Colin Turkington, tucked in behind. Giovanni will be pretty happy with this, though. He's only three places behind his big rival, Plato, now. Jackson has not been able to close up that much yet on Darren Turner, but that's still a possible battle. The Giovanni holding on to fourth, ahead of Matt Neal, and then Turkington, and then Gordon Shedden, 
and then the two John Guest cars, and then right behind them, Stephen Jenny. Harry Volkart just outside the top 10 at the moment. He's sitting in 11th with Stockton 12th, and Michael Doyle now down to 13th. Tom Chilton's down in 14th place, ahead of Jason Hughes and Rob Collard. John George has had a bit of a moment by the look of it. That was up at Beckett's. Look at the quick run through Cops Corner that Matt Jackson has very, very quick through there. Turner's going to have to really work hard now to defend second place from the flying BMW. What a star Matt Jackson is in these kinds of conditions. As you said, that drive at Croft was remarkable. And he's doing it again from 14th on the grid. He's now battling for second place here and still plenty of laps left. Certainly to take second. Jake and Jason Plato might be harder work. Not quite alongside enough to get in the place just yet. No, as I predicted, he can get the initial acceleration, but it's never going to be enough momentum to actually get him all the way down to the to the braking area. But he's clearly got the quicker car, and it won't be long before he's having a go. Look, look, he's gonna he's gonna force Darren somehow into a little mistake, and then he won't be able to use the power of that car to stay in front. Yeah, he's looking for the grip. Jackson looking for the wider line. He'll be cautious here on the outside, but he's done it. And despite a little tap, he gets on the curve. Oh, that loses him traction. That did hurt him. So he drops back behind again. Yeah, it's never, never going to work that because uh, you saw him having a bit of a slide. So and he's, he's on the radio to his team <laughs> complaining about Darren's tactics. But Darren's not doing anything wrong at the moment. He's just using his car's strength to, uh, to stay in front. And there, there's the strength, there it is, look at him power away out of Cox Corner and that gap opens up and this is frustrating for Matt Jackson. Oh, and problems for Mike Jordan, has he been off? Or he's, off? Good, uh, he's got contact, it's either contact uh, or it's a broken rear toe link obviously, but I don't know whether that's happened as a result of contact or just a failure. That's a shame, so we've lost one of the Johns, that brings uh, Stephen Jelly up to 8th place now and Harry Falkard ninth, and Adam Jones into 10th, so there have been some other changes there, somebody else has dropped back a little bit, Matt Jackson up the inside now to try and take that second place, side by side again, but he can't quite get in front because that Seat diesel power is still too much. Now he's got to take a lunge somewhere and hope that he can push, here we go, yep, he's got to make a lunge and try and push, um, push or force Darren Turner wide and lose enough time that he can't get it back on the next straight. Yeah, that was great stuff from Matt Jackson. Really, really good. Aggressive piece of overtaking. Beautiful judgment. And he's up into second place now. Andrew Jordan since seventh. Mike Jordan, though, out of the race. And that bitterly disappointing. It looked like we were going to see both cars well up in the top ten. There's no doubt that Turner is playing a bit of a game here. He's trying to make Giovinardi uh, have pressure on from behind. Yeah, and uh, well, I'm still amazed that Matt Jackson still every lap he's and talking Turkey to... And is past Giovinardi. Well, I think Tur Giovinardi's actually decided it's better just to drop one pace than be knocked off because there is a gap behind him to his teammate, Matt Neal. He knows his teammate won't take him off. No, and I suppose if Turkington goes on the hunt trying to get past Turner, then actually Giovinardi might be able to take some advantage of that. Turner there just getting past the uh, Arcus Racing Vauxhall Astra and so does Turkington, so does Giovinardi but Giovinardi's dropped a place now, he's in fifth position we're in the last lap, Jason Plato under a bit of pressure from Matt Jackson but he should be able to fend him off through the last couple of corners, it's been a wonderful drive by Jackson Plato remember did start on pole and he's led every single lap and he is going to come through once again to take the first win of the day this is the fourth consecutive event that jason plato has taken the win of race one it's also the 100th podium finish for seat sport uk in british touring cars and in fact it's going to be 101 because darren turner just holds on to third place from colin turkington giovanardi finishes fifth ahead of matt neal and stephen jelly gets one of his best results of the season in seventh adam jones an excellent eighth ahead of andrew jordan and harry volcard but Jason Plato takes his eighth win of 2008, Sayat's tenth victory. Well, that's exactly what they wanted coming into this meeting to keep that championship alive. So Plato the winner by half a second from Matt Jackson. Darren Turner taking third and then Turkington in fourth place. But it's Jackson that took the independent win there. Giovinardi fifth, Matt Neal sixth, Stephen Jelly an excellent seventh. Adam Jones with a pit stop, a superb eighth ahead of Andrew Jordan. Harry Volkard took 10th position. Behind them, just outside the points, another good drive from Onslow Cole with a pit stop to finish 11th. Chilton 12th ahead of Shedden. The team Alfred's car's not really going that well in those conditions. Jason Hughes 14th ahead of Doyle, Collard, 
Martin Bell, Aircut, John George, and poor old Chris Stockton with damage at the end of the race. Well, Jason, you've got six wins from the last 10 races and you've managed to close the gap on Fabrizio by 11 points a day. Do you have a goal as to where you would like to be championship-wise behind him by the end of today? Uh, I mean, if we can get to within 20 points going into Brands Hatch, then, you know, that would be so something. And that, that would, I think, put a little bit of pressure back, back onto Fabrizio and the Vauxhall team. Um, but, I mean, it's still a very, very long shot that we're going to have a chance to win. But, as you say, you know, the championship's still, still alive. Who, who would have thought 10 minutes before, the, before that race it was going to sheet down the rain? Nobody. So, no one knows what's going to happen. Do you feel the extra pressure yet, or are you still quietly confident no. the title's going to be yours? Not really. It's just the beginning of the weekend. We have seen uh, wars uh, in the past, uh, so we, we will make the, the, the addition in the end of the day. The rain is, uh, is awesome. I, you know, I absolutely love the rain and uh, we've been praying for rain at Knock Hill and, as you know, never came. So really, when it, we, you know, we looked at the weather this morning, we said, oh, there's a bit of rain. We looked at the forecast and the weather station and uh, it was coming and for sure it came at the right point. To come out with a second place is, is fantastic from 14th. It's brilliant for the championship. It's great for BMW Dealer Team UK and uh, Accents Exchange. Well, another assured performance from Matt Jackson and he'll be hoping that Silverstone stays true to form and stays wet because he starts race two of the day right behind Jason Plato on the front of the grid. Join us again in a couple of minutes' time. DC. Well, it hasn't rained for about 10 minutes here at Silverstone, which is a blessing for the huge crowd we see there at the BRDC headquarters. But it's been Jason Plato's day so far. He really needs to win this race coming up, though, to maximise his points. But he does have the Rainmaster Matt Jackson alongside him on the grid. So we'll go up to our commentators, Tim Harvey. And first, we'll rejoin Ben Edwards. So here's uh, a look at the grid line up then. It is Jason Plato on pole position, then Matt Jackson alongside. Darren Turner and Colin Turkington on row two. And then the Vauxhalls of Fabrizio Giovinardi and Matt Neal on row three. Behind them, Stephen Jelly looking for another strong result with Adam Jones alongside. Andrew Jordan starts ninth with Harry Volcard in the Chevrolet Lassetti. And then it's Tom Onslow Cole in the yellow Vauxhall with Tom Chilton for Team Halford. Team Halford's definitely struggling a bit. Their other car back there in 13th place ahead of the MG of Jason Hughes going well. Michael Doyle and Rob Collard are on row eight. Martin Bell and Eckert are on row nine in their similar Arcus Racing Astras. Then it's John George. Chris Stockton isn't going to be on the grid, I'm afraid. He's not been able to make this start. So that gives a, a bit of extra boost to Mike Jordan, to Alan Taylor, and to the man starting right at the back. That's Stephen Kane. Engine revs build. Lights out. Away we go. And Plato does get off the line well, but Jackson matches him. Jackson coming through, squeezing by the pit wall. And he is going to try and take the lead from Jason Plato. Side by side, down towards Cobb's corner. He's in front. They're not even side by side as they turn in. He's got the BMW in front. What an excellent start there once again by Matt Jackson. Yeah, he just initially got too much wheel spin, but he managed to cure that wheel spin and get the, dr the wheels driving the car forward. And Plato looked at closing the door, but did didn't dare risk being put in the wall. Look who's in fourth place. It's Giovinardi in fourth behind Darren Turner. Little contact between Giovinardi and Turner. Or did Turner just get sideways? Hard to tell. Right behind them, there's some pushing and bumping going on as well. But Giovinardi got off the line pretty well. Yeah, we need to see where they are, because I think Turner is alongside him. He is, and on the inside. This could be crucial. Look at the leaders. Plato going back for the lead. Plato retakes the lead, does he? Jackson's going to go right round the outside of Brooklyn to watch behind as well. Turner and Jim and Hardy are attacking one another as well. Look at them looking for the grip on the outside, trying to go deep into the corner there, Jackson. The car floating around on the surface, but he stays in front. Yeah, he just talk, caught that curve on the echo. Turner's in the gravel. And was there contact with Giovinardi there? We need to see that. Yeah, could have been while well, Turner's recovering. Meanwhile, battle up front still between Plato and Jackson. Plato using the diesel power to try and get alongside. He's done it. He's alongside. But can he hold it? Jackson's going around the outside at Cobb's corner. Wonderful stuff from these two. Jason Plato, a former champion, the top man in British touring cars, along with Fabrizio Giovinardi. But Matt Jackson, the youngster, really showing them what he could do once again in wet conditions. Yeah, Plato could have lent on in there, but he knows Matt Jackson's got nothing to lose and will be desperate to win. And he's going to sit there, I think, in second place for a little bit. He's got a gap behind him. He's better off letting Matt Jackson get his foot down and keep a gap behind him to Giovinardi. 
Plato's got a great run though going here and he's not going to waste it. He's going to get alongside the BMW. Again, it's going to be a battle on the brakes into Brooklands, but this time Plato surely has the edge. He's taken the lead once more. As long as he doesn't run wide on the exit, Jackson looks for the opportunity. There isn't one and Plato's in front. That was a great pass actually. He really slowed the car down from a high speed very, very well. He didn't run wide. He didn't allow Jackson the opportunity to break around the outside like at the end of the first lap. A really good pass there. Brave pass by Plato. But third place is Giovinardi. Plato's big rival is up there in third place. And off is Jelly. Stephen Jelly from seventh. He was running well. So up front, it's Plato Jackson, Giovinardi third, Matt Neal is fourth, Colin Turkington fifth, Adam Jones in sixth, then Onslow Cole comes through. There's Gordon Shedden, the head of his teammate Tom Chilton for Team Halfords. And then behind them, we've got Rob Collard, who's gone a, a very good first lap once again. Good start from Collard. He started fairly well down, but uh, he's in the top ten. He's ahead of Michael Doyle, Harry Volkar, but the safety car is on circuit. The safety car has been called. Oh, and we've got Turner, Turner and Doyle. That's... How did that happen? That must have happened as they were coming back to the safety car. I don't think they hadn't got to the line, but that was coming back to the safety car. It looks like Brooklands to me. Um, we saw Doyle going inside uh, Volcard at um, Beckett, so I think this will be Brooklands. Here we are. Try and see what happened well, here. Doyle spins. Oh, and just recovering, Turner locks up and slides wide. Of course, Turner was that far down because he'd been off uh, on, the been off the on the exit of the first lap with Giovinardi, which we, we still haven't seen. But this uh, is the incident, I think, coming up. Giovinardi inside, Turner taking the wide line, Giovinardi taking the inside, and then just leaning on him, pushing him out wide. Very aggressive move. Ah, uh, lights are off now, so we will see the restart this next time around. Plato, I don't think, will play any games here. He will just go immediately. He gets um, out of the last corner because he knows that he'll gain more of an advantage. Everyone goes wide to get a really good straight line on the exit. And uh, now Plato will be off. Yep, now he's going to use all the power that he's got to try and tra drag the BMW of Matt Jackson, Giovinardi, tucked in behind Jackson, then Matt Neal, then Colin Turkington. Could be under a bit of pressure over the next lap or two from Adam Jones in the petrol-powered Seat, the silver and red car. And then it's Tom Onslow, Cole. Jackson takes a deeper line there into Cobb's corner. Giovinardi right behind him. So Giovinardi will be very anxious to try and take that second place and not allow Plato to gain any more points than necessary. But uh, nonetheless, he won't want to take too many risks either. Mac Jackson's car moving around under braking again. But Giovinardi's through. Jackson's dropped two places. Jackson's dropped two to... Giovinardi and to Matt Neal, and he might lose, yeah, he's lost another one to Turkington. Yeah, the front wheel drive cars there, the quickest line in the wet is to go in wide and come out tight, but of course the front wheel drive can turn in tight, and once they're alongside, they just push the others wide. See, there we go, this is, oh, there was contact, quite a lot of contact there. Oh, Matt Jackson's going to spin this time. Oh, oh, and he gets collected by one of the Halfords cars. Yeah, absolutely, what a shame for Matt Jackson, that really is so disappointing it's tom chilton that made the contact wasn't much tom could do about it the car was spinning in front of him oh what a miserable time it is for tom he's not having a good weekend on a track that he's won in the past where he took his first ever win and became the youngest ever to win a british touring car race but for tom it's not coming together just take a little look back that was Oslo cole getting sideways initially he but collects then, it up matt jackson gets it out of shape and here comes oh Ouch. Oh, that was a hard hit, wasn't it? Uh, I gather that Darren Turner has made it back to the pits, and he's with Janie. Darren, Fabrizio took you out there. Yeah, I mean, it's just bad driving, really. Um, it's not very sporting. You know, they're fighting for the championship, and um, it's a dirty way to fight. From the bosses at Sayat, they're very much, you know, if we're going to win this championship, then let's do it properly. Well, it doesn't seem to be the case at, at Boxer. It's, it's just dirty, unnecessary driving. And it's not often I have a, a grizzle about uh, a driver, but I think Fabrizio's, you know, from now, if he wins the championship, I don't think it's a very good uh, good winner. This is great stuff. giovinardi has got in front. How did he do that? Well, he's just got a bit more tyre underneath him there. He can turn tighter. He's going to have to defend the inside now, though, and uh, Plato's only chance is to go outside. It's a little bit of a risky manoeuvre, this. Giovinardi must feel that his car is quick enough to make a, a, a quick gap on uh, Plato because he's put himself potentially in a position where Plato could have him off. I don't think Plato would for one minute, but uh, 
He's got to be clear of him, and he's already pulling out a bit of a gap. So very confident, and he'll now, of course, allow uh, Matt Neal to attack him as well. So good move by Giovinardi. Let's not forget that Plato carrying maximum ballast, and Giovinardi only carrying nine kilos. I don't know whether that has any bearing. Yeah, it does have a little bit, but this is just grip. This is pure grip. But now Matt Neal is trying to get past Plato. There's no love lost between these two. They've had their incidents in the past. Neal squeezes, squeezes alongside. Oh, they make a little bit of rubbing there, and that's going to give Turkington a chance to get through. Yeah, that's exactly why Giovanni and Giovanni's wife very happy. He wanted to get through because he knew he stood a good chance then of Plato being attacked by Neal and Turkington. That's exactly what's happened. But Turkington hasn't given up on trying to get past Matt Neal himself. That would be for third place. Team RAC driver trying to nip past the VXR machine of Matt Neal. But Matt Neal, very, very good in this car in these sort of conditions. He's going to be tough to pass. Been a while since Matt's uh, had a race win. And of course, he won earlier on this year. Oh, Turkington had a pretty good exit there. But behind, Plato's been passed by Adam Jones. What's going on now? Could this be the championship ebbing ever further away from him if it finishes as it is now? Giovinardi be on 251. He'd be 40 points ahead of Jason Plato. And now he's coming under pressure from another Vauxhall. This time, Tom Onzo Cole. And look at the face of Scott Dennis. It tells the story. The battle for second now. Turkington into second ahead of Matt Neal, who drops to third. And uh, Adam Jones is right there with them as well. Another outstanding effort this from Adam Jones. Independence class being led by Turkington there. He's now in second place overall with Matt Neal behind him and Adam Jones going after them as well. Good stuff. Jones might have a chance here. Matt Neal put two wheels on the curb, lost traction, and he's done it. Oh. Great stuff by Adam Jones. Oh, Turkington's run a bit wide as well. A little oh. touch on the back from Matt Neal on Jones. A little bit naughty, but Jones is going to hopefully have enough speed to hold the inside into Brooklyn. Two lads from uh, the Birmingham area, Adam Jones and Matt Neal, both going absolutely door handle to door handle here. Matt Neal, a double champion. Adam Jones, one of the young stars of British Touring Cars this year, who really has made a name for himself already. But Matt's got the edge here, touch between them, just enough to uh, keep them both on the tarmac. Jones takes a much deeper line. Tom Onslow Cole is catching them as well. He's got past Plato now, Tom Onslow Cole. So Plato's lost yet another place. He's down in sixth place. Oh, look at this! Jones almost through the advertising hauling. Well, yeah, it'll be good job the uh, the banners. Are... Oh, there's going to be... Oh, that was close. That was close. Good racing, but Jones on a flyer. Oh, this is good racing, but it's only going to take a little bit for it to end in tears, isn't it, between Adam Jones and Matt Neal. And here comes Stephen Kane again. Down the outside this time, he's got to try and get a good exit off the corner. He's going to try and run around the outside here of Plato. Now, if the Plato car was working as it should be, you'd think he would just power ahead at this point, but he just doesn't seem to be able to do that. No, he doesn't pull out to the two and a half, three car legs that you expect, does he? Not at all, and in yeah. fact, Kane here is comes Kane. Yeah. still there, isn't he? He's still there on the inside and completes the manoeuvre. Definitely that car, the number 11 machine of Jason Plato is not at its uh, healthiest, shall we say. There will be a bit of investigation after this race into some of the antics, I'm sure, of Giovinardi, but he was being forceful. The question is whether they uh, feel he was being overly forceful, but that's not for us to decide, and uh, I'm sure some of the other teams will want to look at it as well. But otherwise, Giovinardi has driven brilliantly, as we've come to expect from the man who won the title last year and who was desperate to try and take it again this season. He has got the car in front and then just held it there, the gap, 3.7 seconds. And you know what? It's been a long time since Vauxhall have had a victory because they've had to sit and wait for this opportunity. Since but Croft. Yes, it's Croft. It's, it's Croft. been a long time. Yeah. So three months or so since Vauxhall last won a race, but it's going to be Giovinardi who takes victory here at Silverstone, taking Vauxhall's eighth win of the season, Triple Eight's 99th victory. They've almost got that 100th win that they've been waiting for. He takes victory then, Turkington is second, Jones is third, Matt Neal is fourth, Stephen Kane in fifth place, Tom Onslow Cole chases, but Plato finishes down in seventh. But Giovinardi can celebrate a very significant victory there on board with him and you can tell he's pretty happy about that it's been a long time coming since this win it's his fifth win of the season but he's done it ahead of colin turkington adam jones and matt neal stephen kane in a good fifth tom onslow cole in sixth the poor old jason plato struggling to finish seventh gordon shedden was eighth then rob collard and mike jordan completed the points finishers and might be in with the shouts in the reverse grid
Behind them, Jason Hughes just beat Volcard on the line. And he was ahead of Matt Jackson, Martin Bell, and John George. And then a number of non-finishers, I'm afraid, including Tom Chilton, Michael Doyle, Darren Turner, Stephen Jelly, and Andrew Jordan. Slightly controversial, Fabrizio Giovanardi. Darren said that that wasn't very sporting, those little touches you gave him, especially the last one into Woodcote. You can say what he think because uh, he does uh, he does a good job for his team, as he has to do. Anyway, there was a little touch. It didn't come out. It didn't come out. I think it's a normal, normal counter. You did knock him a bit. Come on, yeah. then explain yourself. <laughs> what <laughs> I have to explain? I overtook well, him. You, you did. You did touch him a bit. It's quite easy to sleep on the on the on the wet. He, he was in doing good job. He tried to slowing down uh, before the corner to save, obviously Jason. And I, does, I did my, my, my line, I did my, my job. A bit of argy-bargy out there at times. It's touring cars, isn't it? You know, that's what it's all about. Um, no, I mean, you know, we want to perform at our best and when we make a little mistake uh, with a set setup, and that, in, that includes me, um, you know, of course, you, you know, you get a bit wound up, but, but we'll, you know, we'll have to have a look. You know, the car wasn't working at its best. It's a race like that, you have to concentrate 100%, you know, every, every corner, just to make sure you don't lock up any tyres and just trying to find grip. So, um, you know, I just got on with my own race and just drove through everybody else's accidents. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to get another put in. I think I've got all, all sorts of colours inside of my car after that one. But uh, yeah, it's good. You know, it was hard but fair. And uh, as long as that's the way you know, people play, then, then that's fine. And um, it's just great. Just really good to finish on the podium again. Well, Mike Jordan will start on pole position for race three of the day. The Honda Integra coming up lucky in the draw once again. Jason Plato will be fourth on the grid. Fabrizio Giovanardi behind him in 10th. We'll have the best bits of that race in a couple of moments' time. Well, it's been drying out at Silverstone throughout the day, but this is really still a supreme test of skill and nerve. Here are the best bits of round 27. We'll rejoin Ben and Tim. Here's the grid for the final touring car race of the day. Mike Jordan on pole position with Rob Collard alongside, then Gordon Shedden and Jason Plato starting fourth. Tom Onslow Cole in the first of Vauxhalls on the third row with Stephen Kane. So we'll see how quickly he's off the line this time. Matt Neal lines up on row four with Adam Jones. Then it's Colin Turkington and winner of race two, Fabrizio Giovanardi. Jason Hughes and Harry Volkard are behind. And then we'll have to see if Matt Jackson and Martin Bell can come from row seven. John George and Tom Chilton are next. Then it's Michael Doyle and Darren Turner. Behind them, we've got Stephen Jelly, who's dislocated his shoulder, but he's popped it back in again. Andrew Jordan joins him on that 10th row, and on row 11, it's Eckert and Alan Taylor. Now, is Collard going to get off the line? Well, he is a good starter. Mike is a good starter sometimes, just depending. And both get off the line pretty well, but actually it's Shedden that makes the best start. So Mike Jordan's able to take the lead initially, but it's Gordon Shedden who's moving up into second and will challenge, I would say, into Cops. Now, Jordan and Shedden have already made contact once today. They've got a bit of history this season. Let's hope they keep it clean. Shedden going right around the outside, and he's being followed by Thick. Who's that? Is that uh, Onslow Cole? Yes, it is going with him in the Vauxhall. Somebody running wide. It's Gordon Shedden who leads Tom Onslow Cole into second place, Mike Jordan in third. Well, it's very very greasy on the inside of the track here. The, the most amount of grip is where Shedden has gone round the outside. It does leave the door wide open. Tom Chilton coming through the middle of the pack. Matt Neal's right down there as well. Where's Giovanardi? I didn't quite see where he came through. But up front, it is Gordon Shedden that's leading this race. With right behind him, it is Tom Onslow Cole. Then Mike Jordan. Here comes Rob Cod. No, Stephen Kane, that is. Stephen Kane trying to get past Mike Jordan. He's on the inside, and he may well have got that move made. And Rob Collard's going to try and follow him. And then you've got uh, Jason Plato. He's in the next little group there. And Tom Onslow Cole attacking for the lead. Giovanardi's right down in the middle of the pack. Not made much progress as yet. Battle for the lead, though. Here comes Tom Onslow Cole the inside for Vauxhall, and he's got it offside, Gordon Shedden. Well, two wins already for Onzo Cole. He's looking for another. That Vauxhall works really well around the inside of Muffield. Good stuff from Tom Onslo Cole then. Giovanardi comes through in ninth place, but in the middle of a pack of cars, including Matt Jackson and Adam Jones. There's Collard trying to get past Turkington. Uh, Turkington's actually got past Collard, I should say, on that lap. Up to say, off's gone Kane. Kane from third place. There's Plato on the attack, and look at the Seat flying now, going much better than it did in that last race when he said they just lost traction. The front tyres just lost more and more grip. He couldn't get the power down. Bit of a setup issue, but now it looks to be going very, very quickly. He's in third. Mike Jordan in fourth. Colin Turkington is in fifth. Giovanardi may be playing it a little cautious in these early laps. Here comes Jason Plato attacking for second. 
This is for second place. The Sayat Diesel is flying once again. And Jason Plato trying to get past the Scott. And I don't think that Gordon Chen can do anything about that at all. No way he can fight him off. Jim and Hardy getting round the outside of Mike Jordan there. As uh, Plato now really beginning to pick up the pace a bit more. Yeah, we talk about the circuit drying a little bit. But just for reference, Darren Turner, who popped into the pits and put slicks on, is lapping some four and a half seconds slower at the moment than the front runners. Look at Plato. He just blew past uh, Tom Onslow Cole there before they'd sort of exited to Woodcook Corner. Very impressive, that say at least in this way. He's on board with Giovanardi. Now he's right in the middle of a huge battle here. Jones on one side, Shedden was involved there as well. He's taking a tighter line in, but Jones is up on the outside. There's Shedden immediately behind. But up front is Plato now, 1.7 seconds ahead and with fastest lap. That's another point gained by Jason Plato, of course, that fastest lap. So that's crucial in his battle with Fabrizio Giovanardi. Giovanardi doing just about enough at the moment. He's sitting in sixth place behind this little group as Turkington goes on the attack again. Oh, good timing, good timing. Just as he went what just as Onzo Cole went wide, Turkington snapped across his back and look, he's got in front. That was really good timing. As Jackson's coming. I do love the nuances of this racing with front and rear wheel drive where one is good and one isn't. But now he's going to have to be brave around the outside, Turkington. Oh, interestingly, Onslow Cole's got a bit wide. We're going to end up with three of them in a minute, side by side, because Matt Jackson's joining in. And remember, the rivalry between Turkington and Jackson in the independence class is massive. Both of them want to win that title. Oh, oh, no. No. oh no, Turkington's round and off. I thought he timed it right, but he just clipped the front of Onslow Cole, well, I think. Well, he did everything right, but you would absolutely rely on the guy on the inside not to hit you there. And... Uh, you know, it's it's a brave shout. He, he, he went as wide as he possibly could, but the slightest touch is going to spin you there. Turkington crosses the line in ninth as a result of that. On board with Matt Jackson looking over the rear wing. Yeah, you can see how good the car was, the BMW coming out of that corner. If he can actually go round the outside at uh, Luffield, he will be able to come back. This isn't going to do him any good, but he could stay on the outside, or it might do, it might do. Stay on the outside, Matt, stay on the outside, cut back to the inside on the exit. Wow. If he stays on the outside now, he might get done to him or Turkington. Oh, he's just <laughs> made it, just made it. Fantastic. That was great and stuff. Very brave, yeah. very brave. It was brave, but he just pulled it off, didn't he? what Turkington tried to do, it didn't quite come off. Now Jones is on the attack of Onslow Cole. So can Jackson close that gap up to Jason Plato? It is 1.7 seconds, but there's still plenty of time left in this race. And Jones now trying to find a way past the Vauxhall. Jones goes to the inside here. Has a good run through Cox Corner. Giovinardi still behind them all. Still the lights ablaze on Fabrizio's car. And Jones surely has done it. He's got the nose ahead. I don't think Onslow Cole's gonna come back from here unless Jones breaks too deep. Got a bit of grip on the outside. Some wonderful racing here. I tell you, Plato's tyres are struggling. He's struggling the last lap, a couple of seconds down on his best. Here's Giovinardi going around the outside of Darren Turner, but no. Giving him a very wide berth as well. Yeah, he's going to be a bit cautious, isn't he? He's trying to cut back now on the inside, and I think he should be through without any sort of hassle. We're riding with Jason Plato, and I tell you what, Adam Jones is not far behind in third as well. This could become a three-way tussle for the lead here with still a few laps to go. And remember, Plato definitely struggled in the closing stages of the last race. Look at that. Jackson again. A bit like in race two. Maybe that diesel say it just chews up its front tires a bit. I yeah, don't know. It is a bit heavier on the front of the car. The car is heavier. It obviously has got a lot of torque. It is going to work the tires much harder. And uh, I tell you, if Jackson gets through the next couple of corners, he's going to be away. Yeah, absolutely. This is looking good for Jackson. We've seen it already this year. His performance in the wet, in particular, has been absolutely brilliant. And he's in front once again here. Didn't qualify originally very well for race one, but fought his way to finish in second place to Jason Plato. This time he's gone ahead of Plato, and he's going to try and ease out an advantage of the remaining laps. Good stuff from Jackson. Across the line he comes. He gets an extra point because he's leader of the race. And Plato, six tenths of a second behind. Then Adam Jones in third. The question is now, how much is Jason Plato going to drop back? We saw him drop quite a lot in race two. He's now got Adam Jones behind him. Well, I'm pretty sure Jones is going to get him, which, of course, Sayat won't be particularly happy about because he's in uh, he's in a Sayat, albeit last year's car, but it's run independently. It's run by GR Asia, and they want to battle for the independence and needed all the points they could get. So there's no reason why Adam Jones should help them. 
No, then the two Vauxhalls. Onslow Cole and Giovanardi have to say the likelihood is that Onslow Cole will allow Giovanardi to go ahead, either now or later on. If it finishes as it is now, there are the points. Giovanardi will be on 257 and Plato on 223, so a gap of some 34 points, but still not enough to finish it off here. Plato may struggle to keep him back here because the Vauxhalls travelling a couple of miles an hour faster as they come onto the pit straight. Plato can't do anything about it. Giovanardi's got the inside line and Giovanardi is going to take third place here and Plato simply cannot respond in this latter stage of the race. No, good place to pass as well. Very safe, lots of room there. If he gets through Beckett's and onto the back straight cleanly, I don't think that uh, Plato will be able to come back at him. Everything's looking very good at the moment for Matt Jackson, the man from Henley and Arden, who has already had two victories this year. And this one, absolutely superb in the way he's done it. Let's just take a look, what's been going on here? Whoa, that was jelly, just yeah. unable to stop the car. It looks like he deliberately drove it, but I think he just locked the brakes and couldn't steer it. And a great third victory of the year for Matt Jackson. Absolutely wonderful. He loves these slippery conditions, doesn't he? But the team as well, BMW Dealer Team UK, and the family who worked so hard to make this project work. It's going to be victory for Matt Jackson once again. He wins it quite comfortably in the end from Adam Jones in the silver and red Sayer. Great result for him. Third place, though, goes to Giovanardi. Turkington does take fourth. He beats Plato to the line. Let's just confirm the result then. Jackson, the winner from Adam Jones in second place and Giovanardi in third. Turkington fourth and Plato struggling in the end. Led early on, but he finished in fifth. Tomas Cole was sixth, Rob Collard seventh. Michael Doyle, an absolutely superb eighth for in tune racing. Tom Chilton was ninth, and the top ten was completed by Stephen Jelly. Behind those guys, Gordon Shedden was just outside the points, and Stephen Kane were battling right to the line. Harry Volkard was 13th. John George was 14th, had a Matt Neal, bit of a quiet day for him. Alan Taylor and Aircut, then Martin Bell, Darren Turner, and Andrew Jordan. You know, the BMW is a great starting car. Um, in the wet conditions, you know, the circuit out there today is getting drier and drier. And uh, I think it played into our hands a little bit today, you know, for sure. I think the BMW was, um, was the best car out there. You wanted to win the championship here at Silverstone, didn't you? Are you disappointed? No, I'm tried, to be honestly, but I, I expect the, the Jason Plato performance, so I couldn't believe 100% to win here just if he had failed on the car. No, it's OK. I score more points than him, and it's, it's a perfect weekend for Vauxhall. You know, you've got to keep trying and do what you, you do what you've got to do and in the hope that, you know, a little, little bit of misfortune might come his way. But he's done enough already in the season to, to almost guarantee the win, you know. I'm quite confident they have to score a few points in the next race and be championship again again. Well, a final look at the standings and Fabrizio Giovinardi has increased his lead by three points. 261 plays 217 and he's 44 points clear of Jason Plato now in the SEAT. Well, we've seen some very impressive driving through the wet conditions here at Silverstone, but Jason Plato, despite a win in race one of the day, has failed to impress himself on Fabrizio Giovinardi's championship lead. Surely we will be crowning the Italian champion once again when we meet again at Brands Hatch. I need some protection.